So in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, question thermal and statistical physics, which appeared in GATE 2016 examination. So let's continue with the first question. The statement is the total power emitted by a spherical black body of radius R at temperature T is P1. Okay, let P2 be the total power emitted by another spherical black body of radius R by 2 uh, at a temperature 2T. The ratio P1 by P2 is okay. So uh, first of all, uh, we must have an idea about the power radiated by a uh, black body. Okay, so the power radiated, the power radiated by a black body at temperature T and surface area A is given by power it is proportional to the A the surface area and T power 4 ok so here A basically it is the uh, mean radiating area and T is the temperature of the black body ok so therefore for the given condition we have to find the ratio P1 by P2 so P1 by P2 that will be equal to A1 T1 power 4 upon A2 T2 power 4 ok so we are given all, all these parameters so A1 it's proportional to the uh, the area of the sphere the surface area of sphere it's proportional to the radius here ok so that means that's that is equal to urban square T1 power 4 upon R2 square T to power 4. So we will substitute the uh, given values here. So for the first pair the radius is R, R square and that corresponding temperature is T power 4 and then uh, the uh, radius of the second sphere that is R by 2 its square and the then the temperature 2T its power 4. Okay. So after solving we will obtain that this is equal to 1 by 4 and then P1 by P2 that is equal to 0 0.25. So therefore here our answer is 0 0.25. So let's continue with the next problem. Statement is the entropy S of a system of n spins which may align either in the upward or in the downward direction is given by. So we are given an expression for the entropy of the system that is S that is equal to minus kv n into p ln p plus 1 minus p ln 1 minus p so here kv is a uh, Boltzmann constant the probability of alignment in the upward direction is p the value of P at which the entropy is maximum. So wh what uh, we have to do is we have to maximize the value of S with respect to P, the probability P. Okay. So that means what we are supposed to do is here. So dS by dP. We have to maximize it. So that means this differential will be equal to zero. So when I am taking the differential here. So after uh, performing a differentiation, we will obtain. So that is from here we will obtain that. Uh, the differential of p and then ln p as it is okay plus p as it is and then differential uh, differential of p that's 1 by p okay now uh, for the second term okay so for the second term uh, differential first we will take differential of 1 minus p so that will give us minus 1 and then ln 1 minus p as it is and then 1 minus p as it is and then differential of ln 1, uh, 1 minus p so that is 1 upon 1 minus p and then minus 1 ok and that is equal to 0 ok so after rearranging all these terms so we will obtain ln p ln p plus 1 minus ln 1 minus p and then this will also cancel so that is uh, with the minus sign so minus 1 and that is equal to 0 so this implies ln p 
minus ln 1 minus p so that means p upon 1 minus p and this 1 and 1 they will cancel with each other so that is equal to 0 so that's only possible when p upon 1 minus p that's equal to unity so which implies p is equal to 1 minus p or 2p is equal to 1 or which means when p is equal to 1 by 2 so therefore uh, top is maximum then the p value is 1 by 2 that's 0 0.5 so then for that particular case the entropy is going to be maximum so let's take a look at the next problem the statement is for the system at constant temperature and volume which of the following statement is correct at equilibrium okay so now uh, for this purpose I'm going to uh, take an example of the system in contact with the reservoir uh, because that will allow us to conclude uh, uh, the correct result here okay so we're having a system a very small system which is when placed with the a weak reservoir okay so the, I will call this as system and this is a weak reservoir okay and let's say the temperature of the reservoir is T okay now it's the reservoir it is so large large that any finite heat exchange will not uh, alter the its temperature okay and if we assume that let delta Q be the heat which is transferred to the system from the reservoir okay so when the system is coming into uh, in contact with the reservoir so we assume that D, uh, DQ is the heat transferred to the system okay now uh, so here another important point to be no noticed is that because this DQ amount of heat which is transferred from the reservoir to the system so th this process may be irreversible Whereas while thinking about the uh, reservoir, so this uh, the DQ as compared to the size of the reservoir, it's, it, it's going to a very small amount, or you can say that it's a infinitesimal amount of the heat uh, exchanged by the uh, the reservoir with the system. So this process can be considered as the reversal process. Okay. So uh, by applying the uh, mean the, uh, the the third law, you can say so the net entropy change for the universe during this process when the system comes in contact with the reservoir so that is ds universe which is equal to the entropy change of the system plus entropy change for the reservoir and that's greater than or equal to zero okay so let me call this as equation one uh, further note that uh, this both system as well as the reservoir they are completely isolated from the surrounding so that so that there is no interaction okay it's isolated both of these two they are isolated completely so only then we can make use of this result that delta s universe for the system and reservoir it's going to get then equal to zero okay so now uh, ds reservoir that's entropy change of the reservoir that is equal to the heat exchange by the reservoir the dq reservoir divided by temperature of the reservoir which is equal to t basically okay and the heat exchange between the reservoir and the system that, that, that's identical basically so that is uh, dq r upon t now the heat exchange uh, that occurred between the reservoir and the system that's the heat gained by um, or the heat gained by the system that is equal to heat lost by the reservoir basically okay so that mean i what i can do is i can write dq r that is equal to minus dq system okay and uh, i can call this quantity to be equal to dq minus dq basically okay so therefore making use of equation one and equation two for the combined system and reservoir i can write ds if i call the entropy change for the system instead of calling it ds system if i call this as ds okay so therefore equation one reduces to ds minus dq system 
basically it's a heat this is uh, this equation it is going to define the entropy change for the reservoir minus dq system upon t temperature of the reservoir okay and that is greater than or equal to zero so i can rewrite this as ds minus dq by t that is greater than or equal to zero or ds that is greater than or equal to dq by t okay and dq by t that is equal to for the applying the first law of thermodynamics that is equal to du plus dw upon t okay or by taking t to the left hand side so this becomes tds that is greater than or equal to du plus dw okay or i can uh, dw if i uh, dw this is less than or equal to uh, tds minus tds minus du okay or that is less than or equal to minus df u minus ts provided temperature is constant t is constant okay uh, or oh, this can be written more uh, simple form dw it's smaller than or uh, less than or equal to minus df because u minus ts that is equal to because u minus ts that's nothing but that is equal to f okay so from here we arrive at uh, we will arrive at a uh, very uh, important results so after rearranging uh, the I mean the uh, multiplying with the negative sign on the both side the, this inequality changes to df that is less than or equal to dw and that is equal to p dv remember that we have obtained this condition when uh, by keeping the temperature constant and further if you uh, keep the constraint of the constant volume also okay so in that case uh, so that mean uh, we obtained the result uh, df this is less than or equal to D, uh, dw which is equal to p dv we obtain this result by assuming t to be a constant quantity okay uh, and further if we assume that v v is also constant okay which implies dv that is equal to zero so that the p dv that is equal to zero so in that case we obtain uh, very uh, important result that's df that's uh, less than or equal to zero okay so df it's less than or equal to zero when t and v they are held constant okay so that mean uh, when t temperature and volume of the system they are held constant and if the only constraint on the system it, it is the pressure of the environment okay so in that case the criteria for the equilibrium and spontaneity is the criteria criteria for for equilibrium and spontaneity spontaneity is df less than or equal to zero or what you can say is f2 minus f1 that is less than or equal to zero or f2 that is less than or equal to f1 where equality holds for a for a reversible process and inequality holds for a irreversible process irreversible process okay so therefore uh, from the given options we conclude that uh, for the system at constant temperature and volume which of the following statement is correct so therefore the helmholtz free energy attains a local local min minimum here so maxima it's it's wrong gibbs free energy it's it's also wrong the gibbs free energy attains a local minimum. no it's also wrong so at constant temperature and volume it's it it is the the free energy which acquire uh, either a I mean either it's a constant or it acquire a certain minimum value okay so therefore option is correct had it been the constraint of constant uh, constant temperature and constant pressure so then option b will be correct okay so in that case it's the gibbs free energy that will acquire a local minimum okay if t and p were held constant 
by following following the exactly identical procedure that I, ju I have just discussed here so in that case we, we might have obtained dg that's less than or equal to 0 so in that so implying g2 minus g1 uh, that is less than or equal to 0 okay So let's take a look at the next problem. N atoms of an idle gas are enclosed in a container of volume B. Okay. The volume of the container is changed to 4B. So we are given that the volume of a container it's changed from V to 4B. Okay. So let's call this as volume B1 and this is as volume B2 from the final volume. While keeping the total energy constant. So that means it's given that delta U that is equal to 0. So there is no change in the total energy of the system. The change in entropy of the gas in units of n kb ln2 is. Okay, so here uh, we can apply the uh, the first of thermodynamics to evaluate the change in the heat, the heat exchange that is taking place while uh, the system is expanding. So that means delta u that is equal to delta q minus delta uh, delta uh, delta u that is delta q minus delta w because here delta u that is equal to 0 so this implies this implies that delta q that is a heat exchange that is equal to delta w ok so which is equal to p times db ok so therefore by definition therefore the entropy change delta s that is equal to delta q by t or that is equal to P by T dV when volume changing from V1 to V2. Okay, because it's an idle gas, so that means uh, we can uh, write the equation PV that is equal to N KB T at certain temperature. So from here I can define P by T that is equal to N KB upon B. So make the substitution here. So delta S that is equal to P by T that is equal to N KB dV by V from volume V1 to V2 which is V2 for V. Okay. And that is equal to N KB ln final volume divided by initial volume. That is equal to N KB ln 4. So therefore the net entropy change is uh, N kb ln 2 power 2 and that turns out to be equal to 2 n kb ln 2 so therefore uh, in terms of n kb ln 2 it, it is 2 here to, that's the answer so let's take a look at the next problem the statement is Consider a system having three energy levels with energy 0, 2e and 3e respectively. So we are given a system with three different energy levels 0, 2e and 3e. Okay. With respective degeneracies of, so degeneracy of these levels that's given to us, g is equal to 2. That is, well, let me call it g1 and g2 that is also equal to 2 and g3 that is equal to 3. Okay, uh, fourth boson of uh, spin zero have to. So we are given a system of four bosons. Okay, that means these are identical particles. Okay, have to be accommodated in these levels such that the total energy of the system is ten e. Okay, so now uh, what uh, we have to do is so we have to distribute total four boson in three different energy level in such a way so that the total energy of the system comes out to be equal to 10, 10 units of E. Okay. So that means this system is bound to satisfy the condition sum over I, I taking value from 1 to 3 Ni and that is equal to N1, the number of boson in energy state, uh, let me call this as E1 and this is equal to E2 and this is equal to E3. Okay. So this is E3. Okay. N1 plus N2 plus N3 that is always equal to 4. Okay. That's the first condition. And the second condition is that I taking value from 1 to 3 Ni Ei that is equal to 
एन वन ई वन प्लस एन टू ई टू प्लस एन थ्री ई थ्री एंड दैट शुड बी ऑलवेज इक्वल टू टेन यूनिट्स ऑफ एनर्जी सो लेट मी कॉल दिस एज इक्वेशन टू ओके सो दिस सिस्टम इज बॉन्ड टू सेटिस्फाई ऑल दिस कंडीशन एंड रिमेंबर दैट हेयर एन आई इट्स अ एंटीजर इट कैन इट कैन नॉट टेक अ फ्रैक्शन वैल्यू ओके इट्स एन इंटीजर बिकॉज इट सिंपली रिप्रेजेंट अ नंबर ऑफ बोजोन इन अन पर्टिकुलर स्टेट ओके सो दे फॉर द कंडीशन टू इज मेट ओनली वेन सब्जेक्ट टू द कंस्टेंट वन सो इट्स ओनली पॉसिबल वेन एन वन दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड एन टू दैट इज इक्वल टू टू एंड एन थ्री दैट इज इक्वल टू टू ऑल्सो ओके सो इन दैट केस वेन वी आर हैविंग टू पार्टिकल्स इन एनर्जी स्टेट ई टू सो द टोटल एनर्जी कॉस्पॉन्डिंग टू दिस एनर्जी विल बी टू इंटू टू फोर ई एंड देन रिस्पेक्टली टू पार्टिकल इन एनर्जी स्टेट ई थ्री विद एनर्जी टोटल एनर्जी इक्वल टू सिक्स ई सो सिक्स ई प्लस फोर ई दैट विल गिव अस अ टोटल एनर्जी ऑफ टेन ई ओके सो लेट मी फर्स्ट राइट द डी जेन एसी ऑफ द कॉस्पॉन्डिंग एनर्जी लेवल टू इट्स दिस इज ऑल्सो गिवन टू अस एंड जी टू दैट इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू टू एंड जी थ्री दैट इज इक्वल टू थ्री ओके नो द नंबर नंबर ऑफ माइक्रोस्टेट्स फॉर दिस सिस्टम द नंबर ऑफ माइक्रोस्टेट्स विच इज डिनोट बाई डब्ल्यू दैट इज दे आर गिवन बाई पाई i from 1 to 3 and then n i plus g i uh, minus 1 this is minus not the plus okay minus 1 factorial divided by n i factorial into g i minus 1 factorial okay so that mean because we are having three different situations here so w correspondingly w will be एन वन प्लस जी वन माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल डिवाइड बाई एन वन फैक्टोरियल इंटू जी वन माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल मल्टीप्लाई बाई एन टू प्लस जी टू माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल अपॉन एन टू फैक्टोरियल इंटू जी टू माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल मल्टीप्लाई बाई एन थ्री प्लस जी थ्री माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल डिवाइडेड बाई एन थ्री फैक्टोरियल इंटू जी थ्री माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल सो वाई सब्सिट्यूट में वैल्यू ऑफ एन वन एन टू एन थ्री एन जी वन जी टू जी थ्री हेयर इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन वी विल ऑप्टेन जीरो प्लस टू माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल अपॉन जीरो फैक्टोरियल इंटू टू माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल मल्टीप्लाई बाई टू प्लस टू माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल डिवाइडेड बाई टू फैक्टोरियल इंटू टू माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल मल्टीप्लाई बाई टू प्लस थ्री माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल डिवाइडेड बाई टू फैक्टोरियल इंटू थ्री माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल एंड दिस अपॉन सॉल्विंग विल गिव अस वन इंटू थ्री इंटू सिक्स दैट इज इक्वल टू एटीन सो एटीन इज अवर आंसर हेयर सो दैट कंप्लीट्स द सॉल्यूशन ए टू लेवल सिस्टम हैज एनर्जीज जीरो एंड ए ओके सो वी आर गिवन अ टू टू लेवल एनर्जी सिस्टम विद एनर्जी जीरो एंड ए and the level with zero energy is non degenerate so that mean here g is equal to unity while the level with energy e is triply de degenerate so g is equal to 3 here okay the mean energy of a classical particle in this system is so uh, we can uh, determine the mean energy by first knowing the partition function for this system so the partition function for this system that is equal to uh, sum over i g i exponential minus beta E i and that is equal to one exponential minus beta e i e one. Okay, that is equal to zero. Okay, so that means e power zero that is equal to one. So one into one plus g uh, two which is three exponential minus beta the corresponding energy. So that is equal to one plus three exponential minus beta. E. Now the mean energy uh, of uh, the system, mean energy of a classical particle uh, at temperature T is given as the mean energy E, that is equal to minus curly curly beta of 
L and Z. So that is equal to minus curly curly beta of L N one plus three exponential minus beta E. Okay, and that is equal to minus one upon one plus three exponential minus beta E, and then uh, three exponential minus beta e and then again at the differential of exponent with respect to beta that will give us minus e and that is equal to 3e exponential 3e exponential uh, minus beta e so that means minus beta e upon kt divided by 1 plus 3 exponential minus e upon kt so therefore uh, option D matches with our result. So D is the correct one here.